The Elvish people are a magical race who prize art, poetry, music, nature, and magic. They are creatures of ethereal beauty and unearthly grace. As a wise wordsmith named Tolkien once said, Elvish singing is not a thing to miss. But it's not all about long ears and longer lifespans. Elven adventurers are one of the cornerstones of modern fantasy role-playing. I'm Satine Phoenix, and we're talking elves for 5th edition D&D on today's Handbook or Helper. Don't know how to play? We'll show you the way! Handbook! 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 Her helper! Handbooker helper! From the pages of stories past, like Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, or the timeless tales of Celtic and Norse mythologies, elves have survived countless generations of storytelling to populate modern fantasy fiction, and, more importantly, our Dungeons and Dragons games. Here the elves are an ageless folk who live well over 700 years, and all that time makes for some interesting adventures. Being naturally dexterous, elves' keen senses and fey ancestry make them supremely fit for classes like rogues and wizards. And let's be honest, the plus two to dexterity is pretty handy universally. On average, the elves of D&D are slightly shorter and more slender than humans, with hair color and skin tones that branch far and wide outside the normal spectrum of human pigments, because magic. On top of their proficiency in the perception skill, elves have dark vision up to 60 feet. But one of the coolest traits of 5th edition elves is their ability to trance. No, not that trance. With their trance ability, elves don't need to sleep. Instead, they enter a deep meditative state for four hours of sublime semi-conscious rest. This four hour trance is equal to eight whole hours of regular human sleep. As you can imagine, the ability to recuperate spell slots and other daily abilities so quickly can be pretty clutch. Simply put, if you're itching to roll up a wizard, elves are a great candidate for your next PC. I could get so much work done with four extra hours. Oh, I'm so jealous. Like many demi-human races in D&D, the elven people are divided into a few main sub-races. The player's handbook features three. High elves, wood elves, and Dark Elves, also known as Drow. The sub-race you decide to play is ultimately up to you. The rulebook makes it pretty easy to choose your sub-race based on your own preference of abilities or narrative flair. High Elves represent the most noble lineage of elves whose mastery of magic is a way of life. High Elf characters increase their intelligence score by one and have an extra wizard cantrip in their back pocket, whether they're a wizard or not. Wood Elves are people from forested lands who prize the natural world through their keen senses and natural insight. Wood Elf characters get a boost to wisdom, can move a little faster than the average elf, and can use their Mask of the Wild ability to easily hide amongst nature. Last, but certainly not least, Dark Elves are a subterranean people who are naturally charismatic and sensitive to sunlight. Dark Elves or Drow boast an array of innate magic abilities like dancing lights, darkness, and fairy fire to help them survive their dark, dangerous, and sun-starved home realm. Well, as the wise sages of time always say, knowledge is power. And now that you've got the power, my fellow elven friends, it's time to venture forth and make names for thine selves. I'm Satine Phoenix, and I bid you adieu. Handbook, 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 handbook,